Hey everyone, and welcome back to another very cool episode. Tommy, how are we doing, my friend? Mate, very good. Uh, third time we've caught up um, in three weeks. I'm loving the consistency. I'm loving the accountability, and I'm loving our conversations. Awesome. And you know, you brought up a really, really powerful word there, which is consistency. And what we are going to be uh, touching on today is the power of exercise when it comes to uh, well. It, I want to say parenthood, and that's what we're going to be talking about, the challenges associated. And this is going to be the overarching theme um, when it comes to our chats. It's going to be the challenges that many of us uh, are faced with when it comes to parenthood. Yep. And something as um, accessible as movement and exercise is such an incredibly powerful uh, elixir mm -hmm. uh, to a lot of the challenges we experience. And so many of us uh, are reaching towards pills or um, supplements or the next amazing magical program that is going to get us uh, through uh, these challenges in our lives. But ultimately, if you are not accessing the things that are right before you, that are right in front of you, that are very, very easy to access, movement, sunlight, water, um, uh, connections with other human beings, then you're missing out on the lowest hanging fruit that you can possibly access. And if you're not doing that, there's no point in accessing all the, the one percenters out there that are, re, you know, wrapped up into neat and tight bows into very expensive programs, because yes. ultimately these are the lowest hanging fruits that are going to give you the greatest um, advantage as a parent. Yeah, man, it's so true. <laughs> We're probably doing our own now. If we had a marketing team, we'd probably do, be doing them a disservice. But uh, <laughs> you're, you're exactly right. I feel like, you know, um, the programs that, that, that you know, um, coaches and therapists like yourself and I offer, um, you know, are the one percenters, you know, and um, you could probably tell I've never done a sales course in my life. But but you're exactly right. Like the lowest hanging fruit is, is free for all of us. You know, yeah. it's it is it's. Um, Good sleep, sunlight in the morning, a bit of movement here and there. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're just, we're so primitive. Our DNA is just, it's, we're mammals, you know, it, it, this is 210 million years old, you know, our neurochemistry and our biology. And it's very obvious what we need as human beings. And I think we can get lost in our heads so often thinking that we need to find the the perfect exercise program or the the perfect nutritional checklist or we need to really figure our lives out but what you said is exactly spot on man it's that's the one percent shit you know the the real crux of healthy body mind and soul is in is in is in what we've discussed Spot on. Uh, it's doing the basics. And let, let's really just shine a light on uh, the basics of, I want to call it movement, not exercise, because in my mind, at least, I can see a really big delineation between exercise and movement. You and I have both come from an exercise background um, professionally, mm. trained people to be in a very structured exercising environment. And there is nothing wrong with that. We all live busy lives and we all kind of compartmentalize our, our lives into different brackets and different uh, boxes, so to speak. Yeah. So when you find yourself in a CrossFit box or a different gym box, like like what I did there. Yeah, uh, I loved it. <laughs> I was trying hard not to hold that in. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it's sending a signal to you to be able to, uh, you know, have that 30 minutes or 45 minutes of exercise and movement that you can actually give to yourself. But there's endless science out there that if you just limit yourself to that 30 minutes of high intensity exercise and you sit on your ass for the rest of the day, uh, you know, you get out of bed, you slump into making yourself a coffee and then you go into your car, you go to work, you sit at your desk all day, you come back into your car and you sit in front of TV all night and then go back and do it all over again. Yeah you're going to be in significant danger of dying early mm. and early because sitting is the, as they call it, the next smoking, you know, it is something that is a really big danger. So let's shine a little bit of a light on movement and what movement can uh, do for you as a busy parent. And, you know, uh, I myself uh, have a 15 month old. So I remember still very clearly what it was like to be in those very, very early days. I have a four year old as well. Um, 
of those, you know, sleep, that sleep deprivation. And, you know, sleep is another topic that I would love to sink into. Yes. Uh, but that is not for today. Sleep, I consider in terms of, we're, we're all familiar with food pyramids, right? I like to look at um, ritual pyramids, you mm. know, in terms of rituals and getting stuff right sleep to me is right down the bottom of it not far from there is movement because as you mentioned before tom we're designed to move if we don't move we die yes you know, we are we are beings that are either moving forwards or moving backwards we're either living or we're dying yeah. and if we stay stagnant for long periods of time we're just going to be dying but really 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 slowly yes so, um, what I'd love to look at is not not just how to structure a, a a strength and conditioning program, which I suppose we can touch on, but what I'd like to look at is what movement means as a as a busy parent and how you can start injecting aspects of movement into your day where you didn't think they could have existed. Yeah, awesome, man. I, so, um, you know, I'm I'm not sure about um, some of the, you know, the the, the the overall major pain points you see with with your clients, but something that I certainly notice is um, a real uh, almost what's the word um, like a, a real issue with not being able to have enough time to do anything. Because obviously, and I don't know this from firsthand experience, but when you're a parent, is you just got no time for anything. And there's almost like a dude, what is that word? I'm dying here. It's not resistance. It's re. Um, Resentment. God, <laughs> it took me a while. Yeah. I've had a coffee. I just, you know, I don't know what's <laughs> going on there. A real resentment for for not being able to get a morning routine done. But for one thing that what I've really noticed helps is if we throw out this idea of having any routine whatsoever, because who knows when the baby's going to start to cry or when it needs to be fed yeah. or, or or the diaper needs to be changed, whatever it is. The nappy, I'm not American. Um, Good. Exactly. But I think changing your identity and shifting that idea that exercise or movement is something that I need to tick off in the morning like a chore, as opposed to movement is something who I am, then mm -hmm. anytime you have five minutes, there's an opportunity there, you know, mm -hmm. and or, or, or two minutes, there's an opportunity there, get your burpees done, or go for a walk or have a quick dance, you know, something yeah. that, I, that I really think helps parents in that moment is shaking it all off and putting your favorite song on or something like that. And this is what we're really trying to tackle you and I here is that mm -hmm. we're not asking for a six pack. We're not asking for a new one RM on the squat. We're asking you to become someone who moves. And mm -hmm. that's, if you've got a free moment, that's what's enjoyable. And you, you touch on a really great point. Exercise and movement needs to, it needs to just, we need to take a step back from what that, like what we naturally would look at that as and what it has been kind of boxed into. You know, dancing is just such a wonderful example of what exercise can be. Not only is it the doing, but what are, what are the chemicals that are going off inside of your body when you're doing this? There's been a, a lot of research done into blue zones and uh, high incidences of mm. And, you know, in many countries, dancing as a part of their, uh, as a part of their ritual, their, their nightly ritual after having a big meal or something like that can play a massive role in their longevity for a number of reasons. But like the first thing that comes to mind is so many of us will have like a heavy carbohydrate rich meal where we can spike our, um, our uh, blood glucose level. Now, the best thing that you could possibly do after that is to do so have some movement. If we're, you know, in countries that celebrate that type of thing, you'll have a meal and then you'll you'll dance for half an hour with your uh, your community. Yeah. Um, others of us might want to take the the dog for a walk around the block with our partner or on our own, whatever it might be. Um, something else that you could you may not have considered movement or exercise could be. Uh, cleaning up the house after you have uh, a meal as well. Mm. That's going to do wonderful things for you to help digest your food and stabilize your blood glucose levels. Because if you're in that chronic blood glucose level state for too long, that, that's where you start to see uh, really, really uh, challenging um, uh, health, health problems. And you start to get into that chronic state where you start moving into that kind of I suppose pre pre diabetes and diabetic kind of realm bracket. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And 
you know, I, I was um, thinking before about how deep into the reads um, we want to get here with this. I, I know you and I love speaking about the neurochemistry when we catch up and get caffeinated and so forth. And, oh, yeah. you know, we don't have to go so deep, super deep into it, but I think it's worth understanding people who are perhaps new to this topic might feel like it's a very long bow to draw um, to say that, you know, sitting down is going to, you know, uh, reduce my life expenditure. And it's, it's, it's as, as bad as, as smoking is. And, you know, it's hard to find that connection, but there's a couple of really interesting points. One of them you, you touched on before, we're designed to move, right? So right now we live in a world where we can actually bring um, life saving and juve rejuvenating resources to us, sometimes at the push, push of a button, you know, with Uber Eats and so forth. Yeah. Back when we when we were evolving hunter gatherer times, if we weren't moving, that was sending a message to us that we were going to run out of food eventually. Yeah. And so the two most important neurotransmitters um, in our in our brain and body, um, I think anyway, are dopamine and serotonin and dopamine mm -hmm allows us to move forward towards resources that will keep us alive. Mm. Serotonin, serotonin tells us when we're satisfied and when we're satiated and when we have enough. Mm -hmm. And if we're not moving, um, we're sending a very clear signal that uh, we're going to start to run out of food and die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's very scary. So you do have that increase in cortisol. The other thing that, uh, that I think is really interesting is there are studies that point to a high correlation or high association between being on social media or scrolling or being on technology and um, and um, we're like breathing apnea. So we start to breathe more through our mouths, which increases our stress levels. You know, it gets us mm. out of our parasympathetic nervous system and into that fight or flight arousal level. Mm. So mm. most of us, I'd say 99% of the time when we're sitting down, we're using technology unless mm. we're reading, you know, which is scary. <laughs> It's super scary. And, you know, you think uh, uh, a couple of things jump to mind when, uh, you know, when you use the example of social media, when we're sitting down, obviously in that hunched over kyphotic pose, um, obviously, you know, it'll, it, 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 it um, pretty much forces us to breathe posturally through our, our mouths and, and, and with that stress reflex, but we're also more often than not experiencing stressful thoughts during uh, this um, social media experience yes. as well. You know, we're feeling less than we're comparing ourselves to others. It may not be, it, it may not be a, an instinctual uh, reaction. I do digress, but like these, you're right, you're right. Th th these things are, are so powerful. So, mm. um, you know, you talk about, access to food, these, these things that historically and evolutionarily wise, we have had to get off our asses and not just, you know, you know, hunt and, and forage all day to, to get, sometimes we, we wouldn't get it. And we'd, we'd yep. kind of go, um, you know, 24, 48 hours without eating, right. Mm -hmm. Hence mm -hmm. benefits of fasting, et cetera. But um, we've bred a, a a, a, a people that are overfed and undernourished because we can at a click of a button have a burger turn up onto our doorstep and wash that down with a you know like a, a coke and perhaps a donut at the end yeah. sure we're getting energy into our system but what profile of micronutrients are supporting our vitality and our longevity we're getting the energy, which is what our bodies have um, have needed for since since we started to mm. to be able to survive and survive the winters. But we definitely, definitely need to start looking at the profile of micro, micronutrients into our system as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, so much of this, I think, is very intuitive. You know, when you, when you hear something like. Um, the the amount of serotonin that is released into the brain um and dopamine mm. is is when you when you sit down and you eat or or after sex or any of these very primal mm -hmm. um you know uh, facets of, of living um that is directly related to the amount of effort you've put into getting that reward you yes. Know, so you so you see that, and we we kind of all know that. You know, you feel shit 
after just eating a burger. And I mean, I'm actually quite hungry now. So what you said before sounds sensational. <laughs> and it would be the first time I've pressed uh, the Uber Eats button. But um, <laughs> as soon as you finish that meal, you feel useless. Yeah. But after a full day, you've been, you know, let's just say you've been really quite um, busy, but you've also been very productive. And as a result, um, you, you, you've been, you fasted for a long time. You've, you've got a really good workout in the night before. You've had some great connections um, with your friends and your family. You sit down for a meal and you've got all this stuff done and maybe a banana just, just, just tastes, you know, I've got this, um, I've got this story, Siobhan and I, uh, my partner did a, um, we did a three day bone broth fast and it was, it was pretty difficult. Um, we hadn't kind of worked into it at all. We just kind of went cold turkey straight into it, which yeah. I certainly don't recommend. It's actually quite <laughs> dangerous, which we found out later, but um, we were so hungry by the end of it, we were going to try five, but we just, we, we had to finish on the third day. We were so hungry and we had nothing in our in in our home um apart from a an, an old uh packet of veggies and i remember and in my head i'm thinking oh God, this sucks whatever you know i'll just i'll just cook it and boil it Siobhan was in bed I, I i had two bowls of veggies we both tried a broccoli at the same time mate it was the greatest tasting thing I've, i still think i've ever experienced and ah. I just, it speaks to that reward after effort you know <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know, you, you mentioned something really powerful. It's like the dopamine hit that you get can often come at the, uh, you know, at the point in which you are anticipating, you know, uh, something, you know, if you're anticipating this incredible uh, meal or looking forward to it, it's that's why, you know, it's so great when you book a, a holiday, you get that dopamine hit or mm. when you click um, purchase on, on Amazon or on something, um, you know, you get that dopamine hit and it's not necessarily as powerful when you're, you know, that shirt comes in the mail and you, and you see it. Am I right? Totally. And the neurochemistry associated with that has been proven over and over again. But when you deprive, when you work hard for something, right. And it finally comes and you earn that reward mm. and, um, there's from what i understand there's 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 things in place that that really really hardwire your ability that reward center within you which is what you're saying this bloody green piece of broccoli is something yes. you're able to really really uh, celebrate and you still remember that taste till this day yeah yeah exactly and you know for 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 parents who who have just listened to that when you earn something, so let's just let's just bring it right back to, to movement here, okay? Yeah. Because you might, this certainly comes up in the clinic a lot. People say, oh, I've got this idea that I want to write this blog post or write this book um, or I want to start this new exercise program or what have you. And then the other, the next question usually follows um, is, well, what's the point though? You know, it, it's only five burpees. You know, it's only a walk around the block. Yeah. It's only a, a dance to a song. Why bother? My response is always the same. It's because when you've done it, no one can take that away from you. Yeah. You know, you've earned that. You did that. And I think um, one of the big things that really, really makes people feel like they've achieved something, which is akin to a sense of fulfillment, really, um, is when you finish what you start. You know, if I wake up and I say, all right, God, I've got 10 minutes today use that 10 minutes, do something. And mm. then you can fall asleep that night. And when your head rests on the pillow, you go, I used that 10 minutes. I actually did that. Mm. You know, mm. why bother read the book when I can listen to the audio book? <laughs> why listen to the audio book when I can read a two minute summary? Why read a two minute summary when it's only two minutes? It's like, but if you, if you do that, you did that, you know? And you've proven to yourself that you can do it. And yeah. even if it's, uh, you know, putting your shoes on and going for a walk around the block, versus in fact this has been uh you know proven time and time again we're we're filled with such um this can-do attitude when we start this new health diet or exercise program and we're like i can take on the world i'm going to run a marathon in a week right mm. and it's more likely than not that you're going to give up on that marathon because you're not going to be able to do it immediately yep. but if you focus on the process over the outcome and you focus on what that process is, which is getting your shoes on, going for a walk for the 
three times a week for the first week Mm -hmm. and then building that up to a walk run for the following week. And then you slowly build up that, um, that level of intensity and uh, you, until you actually create a plan where you are running a half marathon or thereabouts over six months, um, then th- th- that's such a rewarding mechanism because you're then stepping into an identity of somebody and you're giving yourself time, you're giving your mind and your body time to believe that you can actually do that. And yeah. results come from shifts in identity. They don't come yes. from somebody that um you know jumps from being a couch potato to being a marathon runner in in five days yeah yeah i mean i love that you said the word identity you know it's a topic that you and i discuss a lot and i think um when you do focus on the on the process you you know because this comes back to this whole notion of why i don't know who i am we know who we are based upon what we've done across time Mm -hmm. you know i I feel like i can call myself a podcaster because there's a lot of consistency there, you know, mm-hmm. and when you, you have that, 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 uh, that plan to, to run a marathon, you go, God, how am I ever going to do this? We immediately reflect upon what we've done because that gives us an idea as to what we're capable of. Mm-hmm. And if we look back on the past and we go, well, I've, I was able to do three walks a week for 18 months, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe I can change that to two walks and a run. And it's like, oh, well, maybe now that's not actually so impossible because I've got something back there. It's like you're building a Jenga tower every time you get that difficult thing down, you know, and in the beginning it's tough because you might put one block down, you know, you've gone for a walk around the block. Then the next night you, you order that crazy donut and burger and the block goes away and you go, I'll never be able to build a tower here, but slowly, slowly, slowly a, a tower starts to emerge such mm. that, you know, if you, if you have a burger and chips every now and then, if you do whatever you need to do, you're taking one block away, but you've got so much consistency that's stacked on top of itself Mm -hmm. that that shame's not really there, you know? So I think, I mean, maybe, you know, without segueing too much, but setting the bar low, I think is really important too. Yeah. I I, I think you're right. I think it's about, I think it's a sweet spot between um, at the beginning as momentum begins to start to be generated, it's like a steam train setting yeah. off, right? If you are on a steam train, you know that it's going to take a while to gain speed. Mm. Those pistons are going to start moving, right? And that as the pistons are moving really, really quickly, the steam train takes a while to get to get off. And we need to understand that we're like that steam train. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take a little bit of attention and confidence. But once you get those wins on the on the board, especially at the beginning, you start to believe. Yes. And then once you believe and that identity shift starts to take place, then you're like, actually, I am an athlete. I am somebody, I am a podcaster, I am a blogger, I am a whoever you are, you need to believe it first before you start moving that level of intensity. Yes. And once you believe, then you start to shift because I mean, if you don't, if you don't move it, you're not uh, eventually you're not going to get to where you want to be, right? Totally. Um, but you need to believe first and you need to challenge yourself and you need to bring yourself into uh, an environment that constantly reminds you of the ability to be able to move as well. You know, uh, I, I did a, a podcast uh, interview uh, with um, uh, Brock McLean, who's an ex-AFL footballer. Yeah. He, he um, has openly discussed mental health uh, issues uh, and he's just recently become a father. So congratulations, Brock. Mm. If you think. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, he talked, he talks a lot about walking his dog and, you know, he knows how beneficial that is for his mental health. And every single, uh, morning he walks that dog and he has his gear set up next to his bed. It's like shoes, socks, pants, jocks, T-shirt, all one on top of the other. So he makes his ritual as easy as it can, and then leash on top of that, right? Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, And and then dog. (laughs) And then dog, dog. dog. He sleeps the dog on his face. (laughs) Uh, Just as a reminder. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, So 
So he makes that ritual as easy as it can possibly be for him to be able to get up and walk his dog first mm. thing. And often we need those reminders. It's like if you want to play guitar, don't lock your guitar in your wardrobe. Yeah. Don't, uh, you know, like if you want to, um, I don't know, become a nuclear scientist, have your, <laughs> have your textbooks out in front of oh. you uh, in, in your study. So yeah. it's there as a constant reminder to you because mm -hmm. we need to make, we need to rig our environment so it's set up. So if yes. you are looking to go for a walk every day after dinner, have your runners visibly in a place where you know they're going to be after you finish your dinner so you can change into your runners or whatever you do to go for a walk and yeah. you get out and go for that walk. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love that. I think uh, that's, it's, you know, that's, that's, that's looking after future you because future you is probably going to be tired, you know, and that the less decisions that future you, the less obstacles rather that future you has to make, the easier it is for future you just to just kind of stroll out. You know, I think, I think that's such a great thing. I, I even try to do that myself. I put my clothes out for the gym the night before because I know that future me is going to be sluggish and slow and he won't want to get out of bed. And, you know, the harder it is for me to just roll out of the car, the easier it is for me to make an excuse that might stick. Um, okay. And so that's, that's, that's a, that's a really good point. And I think, you know, to, something else you spoke about mate, um, or spoke to rather is that, um, this is, this is an unfortunate thing. Um, but it is true in that, uh, motivation comes after action sure you know? does. and we're all trying to find that motivating YouTube video or whatever it is to get us out there or that new program. That's going to be the thing, but really it's, it's doing the thing that, that, that then, uh, that then leads to motivation, which is interesting without getting too philosophical. But um, what's interesting to me anyway, is that motivation, because it comes after action, motivation is therefore relatively arbitrary because yeah. doing the thing is what motivation was intending you to try to do anyway. So why not just get rid of the idea of motivation and just get used to doing the thing? Quite a paradox, isn't it? And it is. You, you know, we're dealing with all of these uh, concepts surrounding being motivated to do something, but but you're absolutely spot on. But we do need that validation. You know, it's like to to, to get up, do your exercise, um, using that as an example, mm -hmm. and then we start to see results and we start to validate our own uh, selves and we start to step into that new identity. And then that does begin yes. to motivate us to stir and repeat. So yes. next time you are looking for this, uh, this special magical um, um, point of motivation and to, to, to get yourself um, up into gear, know that you need to start and you need to start today and it needs to be achievable. Exactly. It needs to be something that you can, you can, you can do almost without thinking at the beginning and then build on that in time. Mate, that's a great way to finish off, I reckon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're going to continue talking about uh, various different challenges that are presented, especially when it comes to to parenthood. If you guys have any um, thoughts or uh, suggestions for topics for us to discuss, we'd mm. love to to hear more and more about them. So you guys are welcome to uh, post some comments in the various different social media channels that we um, end up posting this in. So, yes. um, yeah, looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Mate, always a pleasure. Uh, we'll chat next week, hey? Sounds good, Tom. See you, dude.